we're back. We're back with the post show. Ah, oh, yeah, you do me. Post show for Shay Amy. Um, so, what did you guys think of that, Donny? Starting with you. Oh boy, that was hilarious. Like I, I thought, like originally I thought it was pretty good, but rewatching it, it was actually pretty damn great. Um, I mean, I think the only exception I think I had to that, like the only real problem I saw was Amy getting kind of out of character with her meltdown <laughs> uh, halfway through. That caused the her uh, friends to leave her, like go elsewhere. But other than that, I was laughing throughout this whole thing, especially at Knuckles and Eggman. Oh my goodness, did Knuckles and Eggman make the show. <laughs> like, they continue to... They never cease to amaze me every single episode. Like, they are pretty much the driving force of the humor on this show. Mm-hmm. And, and if there's one thing that they always nail perfectly with Knuckles, it's his expressions. Just that dopey goofy smile that he'll make and just stare at people and it gets me every time because it just you never see it coming until it happens it's that purely undeserved sense of confidence in whatever's going on (laughs) he's he's so confident of having carrots in his ears and he's just standing there smirking like he's so proud about it and this and just i busted out laughing Oh, okay. at it and it was just priceless <laughs> oh, there, there was certainly some great Knuckles episodes uh, Knuckles episodes Knuckles uh, moments in this episode yeah definitely I'd say I laughed more at Knuckles than Eggman but even then Eggman was still a great highlight in this with his reactions to Dave and just his, his moment of like, like like saying simple I blew up the Mad Burger hmm I just like how he's just so blunt, but he just sat, tried to sound so sincere about it. <laughs> Anything that was a little bit out of place for you? I mean, I think you mentioned um, what was he Amy's sudden heel turn at the uh, at one point, but yeah, Amy gets very bossy at one point. Like it, it, it's kind of out of character for her to do that. But I guess the mindset they were like that they were going with is that. Uh, she got so wrapped up in Dave's advances with trying to outdo her that it got to the better of her and she forgot why she started this in the first place and it just got to the point where she was just being rude to everyone and business just got in the way her rivalry kind of plagued her mind and eventually just got to the point where she just had a complete meltdown and everyone was just like yeah no bye <laughs> Yep. So that was pretty much my only real issue with it was that Amy kind of got out of character. She's not really the kind to be bossy, but then again, in another coming episode that we will be seeing in the next few weeks, she kind of does get a bit bossy there too. So it, it's more along the lines of when she feels like something is happening. Like when she feels like something, she gets very determined about something. It gets to the better of her, and yeah, yeah, she gets <laughs> kind of bossy about it. So, <laughs> but yeah, that was pretty much my only real issue with it. Yeah, Cat, what did you think of that episode? Um, flipped on his opinion slightly. Um, Amy. I think he's perfectly in line with the last episode that aired. Or at least the last episode that we looked at. Okay, let, let's go over our continuity because, uh, um, like, yet, yesterday we looked at um, Postal Policy, in which Amy's um, equal levels of meaning well becomes very bossy and controlling. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, meanwhile, I I think they they went slightly too far with knuckles. Too far. Slightly too far. Um, so where would you have reined it in a bit? Would you say? Um. 
I'm, 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 I'm. <laughs> Could you say? I'm... Could I say? <laughs> Could I say? There is a problem. Why are my words not coming to me? Um. So, I mean, what, what, what sort of, what was the joke that overdid it then? Well, with that, um, I mean, it was. Knuckles rotates himself instead of his hat, gets very confused, and then very visibly has to be led around again by his hands. See, I, I thought that was great. <laughs> it, I, I thought it was kind of saddening and pitiful, to be totally honest. I, I yeah, I, I also agree with that. <laughs> I, that's almost like, um, that's like the character in Boom just summed up entirely, isn't it, really? that moment just knuckles taking a thing literally um in, in completely he didn't even thing. take it literally he was told he was told to turn his hat around so he turned the rest of him around at yeah. the same time knuckles's logic choices are a bit out of sorts but yeah mm. just, but the, the, the confusion and the slight bit of fear as well because they well, had gone it was, it was very sad for me, yeah. Boom Knuckles is best when he's just like. <laughs> Sorry, but, being but... a completely intentional jerk. <laughs> Sorry. He's, Boom Knuckles is best, like, you said. Like, and we I can't only... stand here and watch this. Okay, says Knuckles and sits down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you said Boom... And he seems fully aware of what that means. You said, you said when Boom Knuckles at his best, I immediately had the vision of Lawyer Knuckles with the sandwich. <laughs> and the bleh, noise. Um, what was that noise? <laughs> Remembering to several past episodes, what even was that noise? What the hell's going on? Things. But yeah, there you go, you've had my opinion. Um, but I liked the episode overall. Um, the ending I have a problem with because no seriously Amy was clearly the better restaurant runner it, to, to be fair that yeah that, that Amy's major seem... problem came from a light from from um, allowing Eggman and because you know you should expect Eggman to do something evil the I, I can sort of see I can kind of see both sides here like on the one hand yeah, Amy really deserved a better ending like it really wasn't a good ending at all in terms of like Amy just got completely screwed over at the end but to be like, fair I should leave this job to the professionals what professionals you established at the beginning and throughout the entire episode that Dave the intern the only person working at Medburger is in no means a professional I, I think it was more along the lines of like she realized that even though Dave is incompetent and bad at what he does I guess she realized she wasn't faring any better at the end and not to mention Eggman was doing even kind of worse because he kind of destroyed a restaurant and Dave's restaurant so but at the same time, yeah, it really does stink that Amy kind of got royally screwed over at the end. Um, I honestly did think that... I mean, to be fair, I, there was going to be something that kind of set things back to normal in a way. It just things that kind of went that route. Like, no real recognition for what Amy did or anything. But then again, they did all get a free burger, I guess, <laughs> for rebuilding the place. Except Simon. Except Amy, because he holds a grudge. I guess, because of moving fish again. Yeah. Assuming that's the same fish, so he kept, he somehow, he, put, he must have put the fish back into some kind of tank. <laughs> kept it alive again. Uh, oh boy. Uh, in, in terms of my thoughts, you know, that's probably one of the best episodes. Yeah, me. like, because um, everyone seemed to be 
di- well, I say everyone, there was a number of little threads going through it, all of which clicked well. You had Amy doing her thing, and I agree with Kat actually, in that bossy, a bossiness is one of Amy's traits in this particular series. In fact, for all media generally, but it's more so in Boom because she's the organized one. It just it becomes it becomes more obvious that her bossiness becomes more evident when she's actually like uh like determined and setting up for a yeah. huge mission and all that, like with the restaurant. It, it's it's one of those it's one of those things where your your strength if you rely on it too much and you get like too confident in it, it becomes your undoing or if you yeah yeah if you're so fixated on that aspect of it 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 becomes the thing that actually pushes you the others away from you Um, yeah and in in that sense it it would make sense why the ending went the way it did because although amy did have a good restaurant she did have the best of intentions hmm. that eventually was what caused her undoing too yeah because she lost sight of of um yeah what the what she was doing in the first bit. So Amy's... She didn't really lose sight of it, though. Well, she didn't. Even but... when she goes on the angry rant, you think she's lost sight of it. She's, like, she's talking about revenge and stuff, but then she finishes with good service with a smile. Which means she knows exactly what she's doing. But she's become <laughs> ruthless in in that. But then again, I, she, I think... but again she was kind of ruthless before, because her, her entire goal in, was... Your entire goal going into business was to take Bepoka down. So it wasn't. It, it, while she had like good intentions in terms of actually providing people with goods with this good service, let's make no bones about it. She was actually going in there specifically to drive Bepoka out of business. Yeah, which, and is, which she... is why the great. Which is why the great thing with you had with Eggman. And the fact that Eggman come and Eggman's the one who recognizes and this is a bit there's a bit of a parallel with um, the bit when she's the interior designer and again it doesn't in a way it's not as bad as that episode because at least in this one the rest of Team Sonic do recognize the fact that Amy has talent in that sense as opposed to the uh, designing episode whose name escapes me um, Fortress of Squalitude Fort- yeah Fortress of Squalitude in which case uh, in which you know her friend didn't really have any respect for her ability whatsoever <laughs> even after the event um, yeah, it's Sonic- really weird that Eggman is the only person who understands Amy yeah it, it is it is a little bit weird this, this, this is the officially second time then that Eggman is able to see something Amy's doing for what it is and is the one to you know actively encourage and wants to take a role within it for one reason or another yeah again Egg- Eggman was Again, Eggman's See, reasons for wanting to do, wanting to go to party with Amy was specifically, obviously, you know, there's the whole shared revenge concept, but you know, he believed in the restaurants, <laughs> so he wanted to be involved. He believes in Amy. He believes is... in Amy. He know he knows Amy could do, can do this stuff. So it's, it's yeah, it is it is one of those weird things. Maybe that... one day we can use this to turn Eggman to good. Well, isn't that Amy's? Isn't that one of Amy's? Or at least turn Eggman goals? to acceptable. Um. Well, remember back when Amy was acting as like the go-between between Sonic and, and Eggman, and they don't kind of talk out their friendship feelings or whatever it was. Yes. Amy's, so Amy's done this before. This is kind of one of Amy's things. But yeah, it's this it's, 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 it's this weird thing where Amy and Eggman are perhaps more on the same page than Amy and a lot of the others. I, I definitely feel like even though we've had like uh, other episodes where Amy did get quite a bit of a focus, mm-hmm. I think this was the first episode where we really got to see like Amy's personality in action. And I mean, 
That doesn't mean that there wasn't any episodes that Amy didn't have attention in, by no means, but I think we've really got a good idea as to what Amy is like now. Yeah, I, I, I would agree. This is probably the first one that does put Amy front and center as the character, and that's not just because of the title. It's yeah, like, it, it is. It is all about Amy and what Amy's doing. Whereas Fortress of Squalitude was, yes, it's about Amy and Amy's skill, but it's equally about what Eggman's trying to do and what Eggman wants in in you know redesigning of his of his lair and uh, trying to make the redesigning of his lovely abode in order yeah. to impress Tan. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the, the, <laughs> yeah th this was actually the first time that we really had an Amy-centric episode. Mm -hmm. I mean, the other episode, you know, like you said, was kind of hogged by Eggman, actually, because it was really more so about Eggman, you know, wanting his layer fixed up more so than Amy, you know. You know like the second act was just pretty much Eggman, I think. And Eggman, and then there was, like, Amy's little bits, but Eggman's the main focus of reacting to what she's done. Yeah, it was pretty much. I'd say Fortress of Squality was more so of an Eggman episode than Amy. But whereas this, on the other hand, was definitely an Amy centric episode. Mm -hmm. Like, Amy pretty much was in the episode in some way almost every minute of the episode. And the only time we really didn't see Amy was when they would cut to what um, Dave was doing or what the Sonic, what Sonic and mm -hmm. friends were doing away from. After that they had was left. specifically directly linked to what Amy, Amy was, was doing, doing. Yeah. So, so either yeah. way. But I, I liked Amy. Uh, there was, uh, Amy's entire concept of direct insertion of food into the stomach, of bypassing the mouth. Um, what the hell? Yeah. What the hell? You're right. This is this is one thing. This, this is one thing. I say, this is one thing we don't want Freiburger feedback on. <laughs> as to, as we we just we don't want to know this one. Okay. <laughs> Leave it to Wait. the imagination, and preferably a piece of the imagination that's then walled off and sealed. It's never accessed again. Destroy Ugh. that. Mm. You mentioned about who would write such a thing. We'll we'll, we'll ask that question in in a second. But um, but just yeah, just 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 to uh, carry on, I, I I did like the knuckle stuff. I I thought that was that was very funny. Um, if and I, again, I agree with Cat. A little bit sad actually. Um, the the lead the leading of knuckles background by the hand with, with tails was was both sort of funny and then sort of forced about it for a little bit. But oh. But there were a number of times where I just I just legitimately laughed out loud um, when when I watched this through for the first time. It is is great. There's a lot, a lot of the characters are on point. Um, the the self reference to the lack of detail about where they actually are that was beautiful. Was beautiful. <laughs> to, to, to reference that to, to reference the village, acknowledge that they they're it doesn't have a name and then specifically not address the problem of that by giving it a name <laughs> <laughs> they just say oh it's unnamed moving yeah. on yeah and, and, and the fact they just completely addressed the flaws in the series which were frankly flaws set up by the game <laughs> okay they're, they're making fun of themselves which is the best thing yeah it was it was great um, it's humor we haven't actually seen yet, and everyone thinks that the show is getting. St some people would think that the show is getting stale, and it's like, no, they they, they haven't seen this episode hey, you, you, yet. You've had half a series, or or if you're in some corners of the SMB, you probably think this is season three right now, but it's not. Um, we just, we just started season, just started the second half of season one, um, but yeah, it's it's definitely one of those. Uh, one of those though that it was just just wonderfully done um, yep. and it came out of nowhere as well which, which I, I loved it, it's like you're halfway through the season and you know, now yeah, yeah, they're starting to be a bit self-referential on things which is great um, who else I, 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 and Cubot though their appearance was fleeting it was fleeting the again, one again, time. The, uh, again, the fact that they were just there was just that was an awe moment because it was cute. They're adorable. <laughs> it was cute um, with them just sort of suddenly being there and 
I said, but the moment when all the robots are tearing Shay Amy apart, and or what well, sort of caught between the fact that they were still doing their jobs as as you know uh, bus boys or whatever it was they were doing, but and then they just sort of look at the pile of plates that they've just finished like washing or something, and just and just, just go, they just sort of look at each other and just go slam it down. <laughs> <laughs> There was a lot of there's a lot of very very good moments in there, um, and and again Sonic the Jerk Hog worst friend ever, uh, continue, continue, continues to be, um, continues to be you know a team there is no I in team but there is the word Sonic, <laughs> apparently um, Sonic team yeah exactly, uh, and and again Sonic's uh, Amy rings up saying that she needs help. Sonic is not going to help at all. Eggman's robots are here. Oh, well, we'll come for that. <laughs> <Just like, laughs> what a jerk. An absolute jerk. Admittedly, uh, he'd had experience with working with her and didn't like it and walked out. This is true, but then again, this is this is Sonic as well, who's uh, who's patience is not a virtue for Mister Mister the Hog. Mister the Hog. Mister the Hog. Mister T Hog. Uh, Mister Hedgehog. Remember, the is his middle name. Um, yeah, but in in some alternate universes, um, I'm right. Um, <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's how you're choosing to cover that. It's, absolutely, it's, it's, absolutely, absolutely. I just wanted to say the hog, just just as a sort of conceit. But never mind. I, I was I was corrected. <laughs> I was corrected anyway. Um. So. Yes. Yeah, so but but who did write it? There's a question. Who did who did write it? Cat. Do you have oh, the details? Second, I yawn. It's fine. Um. Reed Harrison. A person called Reed Harrison. Reed Harrison. Uh, do you have the their IMDb details? Would be good to. I do. Um, uh, they. I do. I'm currently looking at them. Um, <laughs> we have watched episodes by Reed Harrison before. Which were? Uh, Eggman unplugged into the wilderness and don't judge me. Ah, so, so. Are all listed under the writer credits here. So Reed is responsible for Sandwich Hand. Okay. That's... That explains a lot. That does explain a lot with Knuckles, actually, because all of those are very much slightly slightly goofy in another world Knuckles episodes, actually. So. Yeah. Um, I, want the, I, want the ju- I want the robot judge back. From- uh, he's written two episodes of The, Sim- of the Simpsons, mm-hmm. which were... Eleven years apart. <laughs> oh, good to know. Good to know that you had a hit the first time round. <laughs> was much in demand after that. Well, actually, actually, the um, actually the the first episode that he wrote was uh, the Springfield Files, which is the one where Homer sees an alien, and there is a crossover with the X Files. I bring you love. Yeah, that was a great episode, but then apparently he didn't write anything else until Papa Don't Leech in 2008. I bring you carrots for your ears. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> he's written two episodes of Celebrity Deathmatch. Awesome. Which is coming, that's coming back, by that's, the way. That, that's why maybe, I read that out. Maybe, maybe he'll be called into action again to uh, write for the um, He wrote an, wrote an episode of Pinky and the Brain. Ooh. Just Ooh. uh Donny and his bits, Donny and his bits. <laughs> um, I have three beard, episode beard, credits beard. here for George the Jungle. The well, two thousand seven version. Okay, well that can't be helped. <laughs> um Is there Batman? Is there Batman? There is no <laughs> Batman. There isn't Batman. What's he doing on the series then? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, going on adventures in various sections of this page because there's various sections of this page, including the miscellaneous crew section. Um, 
Okay, so we're talking about the two Simpsons episodes that he wrote. One of those and three others he was also the story editor for. Mm. Cool. Boom, man. You, um, story ed- editor for 21 episodes of Men Behaving Badly. Oh, yes, I remember now. Cause it was and the writer version. for one of them. This was the American version. Mm. Uh, I think, actually... I may have seen um, on Bill's Facebook because uh, Bill has been at San Diego Comic Con as part of the Archie panel yeah. and, and, and other things. Yeah. I'm pretty certain I saw Bill Freiberger, and it might have been. Oh, obviously, Bill Fryer is one of his pictures, but I think it might have been next to him. Uh, oh, no, it's not. It was okay. Evan. No, it's not. It was. Uh, it was a sign saying Evan Stanley. So no, it's not. <laughs> Never mind. It was. It was worth a go. It was worth a go. It, but you uh, got uh, it, it was that well-known photographer Greg Han. It turns out. And, and well then, and, well wow. Okay, the face on Bill. Um, I'm, I'm surprised. You've, I'm surprised. You've... Judging by the judging by the look Bill's giving Greg, <laughs> I'm surprised Greg didn't drop dead. <laughs> it's... You have gone wrong in so many directions. Wow. Evan. Okay. <laughs> Congratulations, Greg. If you survived, please let us know. Because uh, wow, <laughs> let me just. We just send that picture. Oh dear. Yes, I hope the, good, hope the Boom Team did have a uh, a good San Diego Comic Con. Be interesting though to know what exploits you guys got up to, actually. Um, please tell articles. us the YouTube comments. Mm, please do. We'd love, we'd love to hear, actually, just generally how you guys are doing. Yeah, you know, well, it's what been have a you month. Been up to? Tell us, tell us things, tell us stories. So how how are the spouses and or partners and or empty space where a spouse would be? There, I've been writing articles and writing you articles. I don't know how to make a joke. Team, don't even know what you've been doing. <laughs> Everyone I knows never, what you've been doing. I've been I've been writing articles about the ground made of jawbreakers. <laughs> oh yes. Why do you? Why is why is the ground made of jawbreakers? I don't know. But why did you? I was tired. But why did you say that then? Because it was stupid and I was tired and <laughs> I was up all night that day. Anyway, there you go. You can you can see you can see the ev- the evil look that is that Bill's giving. <laughs> I think I'm getting the evil look from Kev as well. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would be seeing evil look, look at that. Me. Oh, there it is. That is a face. <laughs> <laughs> That's impressive. Oh boy. It's for Evan. That's a random kid for Evan. All right. <laughs> right. Um, was there, so. was there any was there any other bits in the reads? Oh, actually, that's now, now I know why I, where I saw it. I think I saw. Reed actually comment on one of, Bill's, one of Bill's posts the other day. That's where I've seen. Oh, that oh, there we go. But, uh, um, but hello to Reed. If you want me to go fishing around for other credits, is it was there anything um, else that, that stood out? I mean, we've probably covered it before. And in, 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 um, not that I co-producer for seven episodes of Brothers Keeper and wrote two. Yeah. Oh, if that. Do you find that significant? Me, there's nothing, nothing to me, Donnie. Um, my brother. Wait, it's, it's the brothers keep. Brothers, keep brothers keeper. I that, for some reason that sounds familiar, but I can't put my finger on it. Maybe huh. I should. Uh, maybe I should take an adventure into the TV series page. I'm pretty certain that we. we I mean, it sounds familiar because we obviously have gone through the. Credits for for Reed at some point previously, but possibly um, credited generically as a writer for Drawn Together. Oh, no oh, specific yeah, okay, episodes. Yeah, that's, that's... Oh, yeah, and Bill... consultant for two specifically. I'm pretty certain that that 
it was the Reed is the one is the person that Bill commented on one of the videos going you know, check it out and just you know see our, our, our partnership goes quite a way back or something so that would explain because he was on drawn together which is of course a, another project worked on by Mr. Bill Freiberger okay I think we're kind of at an end um, yeah I mean, in, in yeah. terms of questions for the for the boom guys anyway I mean apart from who is this fourth walrus there's, there's, well, there's, how there's, many walruses how many walry wal walry <laughs> Because there, there's there's male walrus, there's there's male walrus who we saw who had the hat. There's Willie Walrus, who is the member of the Lightning Bolt Society with the big tusks that go sideways. Then there is like elderly looking walrus who is on the council, the village council, um, who you guys will see in uh, Blue with Envy, um, which also has a very bizarre thing with with Dave the intern having some kind of role on the council which is a bit weird um, but yeah I'd love to so, so, <laughs> somebody please explain all these walruses are all over the place and somebody please explain to us the plural of walrus <laughs> I think the plural of walrus is walruses is walruses yep also get us thesauruses so that we can find out words for walruses and, but we'll be back next time Yep. With what will be episode twenty-eight, which is um, blue with envy. Blue with envy, and oh boy, Swifty the shrew. <laughs> the swiftiest of shrews. The swiftiest of shrews. Radical speed. Radical speed. Radical speed. <laughs> Maria. <laughs> Radical Maria. Radical Maria. Radical. Two hundred points. Indeed. Um, get to Was your... Radical 200 points? I can't remember. Oh, what, 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 I would what, love what, to Sonic remember Adventure, the random the, points titles. The Sonic and... of oh, Convention 2. Well, I'm going to have to look this up now. No, you don't have to. No, there is a Radical in Sonic Adventure 2. Yeah. I know, Adventure that's what I remember. Scores radical. A Radical, I believe, is the second to best. I think there's I think there was perfect, and then radical. I believe was right below that. I don't really remember layers of random um, Sonic. Right. Okay. Um, Except for you know, good, great, awesome, outstanding, amazing, right. which it, really can just for it's anyone just... who's interested, because what we're what we're talking about here is that is the trick combo point scores that you got in for for jumps, and specifically for using the the board as well. Um, and just combos generally. Uh, so uh, good, it goes good, nice, great, jamming, cool, radical, which is 700 points for oh. and seven hits. Tight, oh. awesome, extreme, and perfect. Perfect sounds boring next to like perfect, jam. Perfect is for like 11 or more, which I, I appreciate the fact that it's 11. <laughs> okay. IGN. I appreciate the fact that it's 11. So awesome. point eight out of ten on IGN. But yeah, that's that's your lot, guys. So we'll be back next time for more cool, nice, great jam and cool, radical, tight, awesome, extreme, perfect commentary with Kat and Donny, and I'll be there as well, bringing it back down to some kind of disastrous zero. But tune in anyway, um, and uh, there, there will be fun. There will be laughs. There will be a shrew, and we can't say fairer than that. From us free. Bye for now. Bye. Bye.